Hello, my name is Sean Wilkerson and welcome to Hacker Eyes. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. If you like this video, please click the like and don't forget to toggle the notification bell. We were given access and permission to audit an ASUS GT AX11000. We took a look at the router and we found out that there were some settings which we have no idea where they're from. They're not documented on ASUS's website. They're not in the product documentation. We were not able to even readily find anything using search engines. Let's get into this. I went to the administration tab and clicked on system and we scrolled down and we found the network monitoring for DNS, DNS queries and ping where it was enabled. We also found a resolve host name for a dns.msftncsi.com. We found a few IP addresses, uh, an IP, two IPv4s and an IPv6 one sitting there. And ping target duckduckdo.com, they're safe enough. Oh, who are these other people? Where do these settings come from? Who put them in the router? So anyway, so we, we did a quick look up on the dns.msftncsi.com and supposedly this is an old post from November 2016 where another ASUS router was sending a lot of, uh, like 25 times a minute request to this website, this domain. So we do a lookup for the domain and we find out that this is going to Washington, D.C. It says Washington, D.C. Redmond. Uh, Redmond's not in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is its own city. So I'm curious on where that came from. Redmond, Washington's 3,000 miles the other direction. So what else do we have here? We have some IP addresses. Uh, 131.107.255.255 and there you go that IP address comes back to this oh it may be Washington Data Center or Redmond DC I don't know why that's in there like that that, that that's strange so we have another IP address 112.4.20.71 so let's find out where that IP address goes to oh interesting 112.4.20.71 it's ChinaMobile.com, China Mobile Communications Corporation. Okay, so I'll bite. Who is this? Even though it's kind of in the name. Let's take this, we'll copy it out, let's drop it into a search engine. A state owned enterprise controlled by the government of the People's Republic of China. So out of the pan into the fire so we're being spied on by Microsoft and China now I don't know if this is a part of Asus's firmware I don't know if those were default settings the only way I could, I'd find that out is to re uh, put an older firmware in check the settings see if it's there and then put the new firmware back in but I promise you those entries were not added by anybody here anyone that's ever used this router those settings were not put in by us was this an alarming thing it appears to be so maybe what i do need to do is exactly that i need to put an old firmware in and see if those settings were there and find out if these were indeed in the of new firmware that weren't there before so we'll do that so i went back a few versions a firmware, we're at 3004.384-9566. It is still there. We shall go back further. Don't worry about any of the information in this. None of it's real. It's all going to be reset once I'm done with this video. Let's go down to the administration. I should know where it is by now. System. Good stuff. So here, so here's what I, I, I did. Based on the fact that firmwares are typically non-destructive, so, okay, let's see if we can just wipe this thing completely out and prove for a fact whether or not it comes from ASUS's firmware or if somebody added it later by gaining access to the, to the router that they shouldn't have. So, not in this version. The screen will be different. Back in the 5252 version, 
it doesn't have this second checkbox. If it does, I don't remember it, but then again, I've seen a few of these today, quite a few. I clicked that, initialize all the settings and clear all the data log for AI protection, traffic analyzer, and web history. I click that so that way I know it's gonna wipe out all the, uh, the personalized space. Then I click the restore button. I'm not doing it now, I've already done that. Once it goes through that entire process, you have to rerun the initial setup router software, which I'm sorry, it's a pain. Anyway, so once you go through all of that and you have to set up a network and you have to get certain things started set up just to be able to get things, then you have to restart your app, then it connects and then away you go. Logged into the, uh, this is still 5252 at that point. Logged into the router, went to the system, went down and said, hey, it's gone. Success. So I said, okay, so I started stepping back up. I installed the 8011 firmware, then I installed the 9165 firmware, and it still wasn't there. So I'm saying, okay, it's clean, I solved it. I don't know where it came from, but, but it's clean, it's, it's gone. So then I went ahead, as you, you can tell on the screen up here, is I went to the 41,700, which is the newest non-beta firmware available. Installed it, and look, it's still not there. So right before I started making this video, I found out where the culprit is. Wasn't a hacker, it's not nefarious. I'm sorry, Asus is the problem. They did this. If you come in here and you select ping, that's where the duckduckgo.com is. It just pings the site and makes sure that your network's working and your DNS resolver's working. But if you click the DNS query, Oh, there they are. So for some strange unknown reason, and I think it's ridiculous. I don't think I don't agree with this. It should not be happening. But Microsoft and the Chinese government are being used to perform the monitoring functions of the Asus GTAX 11000 router. So my advice to everyone is to turn these off. The DNS query, the ping, turn them off. And I urge ASUS to find better services and providers. You've got Google's. I don't like theirs either, but I'd like it better in China's. You have Open uh, DNS, Cloudflare's. There are better choices. And if you need something for, for people that are putting Chinese firmwares on your products, then in those products do what's required by the Chinese government. It should not be in a firmware coming to the United States or anywhere else for that matter. So if you like this video, click like. If this shocked you, put some comments below on how, what, what your thoughts are on this whole process. And somebody might say, hey, you're just being alarmist. Well, here's the thing. I don't know the firmware and neither do you. To help you understand better on why, let's take a quick look at what Google says they collect when you access their, their open free domain name servers. Users geolocation, country, region, and city, not more specific than one square kilometer and a thousand users. In other words, down to around a half a, half a mile. Well, I'm gonna give you a hint. A half a mile in, in, in our area is not gonna get you a thousand people. Your DNS query for Google, this is just an example, it's just somebody's published what they collect, is they can pretty well boil you down to a neighborhood, which is kind of small. And you say, well, that's still okay because they still don't know which one or where I'm at in that area. Just hold on a second. They don't have to. The other thing that you have to take in consideration is the actual way a packet, the message that is sent, even if it's just a generic, you didn't type anything, this is just the router itself. We're assuming this is a monitoring, an uptime monitoring feature. We don't know, like we said before, it's undocumented. So if it is just monitoring, then every time it pings their server, it's getting a MAC address. And a MAC address 
is unique to every connected device in the world. It doesn't matter what it is, no two devices on the world have the same MAC address, but by design, the hardware specification is they are all unique. Well, that's okay. They can just, they'll have uh, an idea of, of what, no, 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 no. Part of the MAC address is an identifier for the manufacturer that made it. So if you are a hacker sitting in China or wherever, and you can get a MAC address, look up the manufacturer ID number, you can look through your automated scripts and Metasploit or whatever, and you can say, oh, routers, ASUS, whatever. And they, at that point, they don't need to know your physical street address. They can go directly at your router. That is my concern in this. And you might say, well, the router's sitting behind a device that my ISP gave me. Well, that MAC address very well is probably going to be the one that's presented. So they can go at that first and then work their way. They already know which device you're, you're, you're probably using as a router. For all we know, they have a dedicated IP address in these organizations just, just for SUS products. I don't know. I don't know what anybody does. I don't even know how we can ver verify that check. And we're not going to ask in an email and get a response, I don't think. But the point is, in a DNS query, you're exposing where you're at. Granted, if you're using a VPN, you're going to expose where the server is that you're coming out of in the VPN tunnel to access the internet. So that'll throw them off a little bit. But the point is, is they're still going to have the MAC address for whatever made that request. And so they're going to be able to customize attack straight for that device set. Um, to give you an example, instead of you being one of a thousand people, basically like Google was saying, a needle in a haystack, you are um, at that point, you become a pin in the drawer. And let me let me show you what I'm talking about. These are all the pins in my drawer. If I'm looking for an ASUS GT AX11000, I say, okay, I'm looking for ASUS devices. Oh, well, let's see. I have a couple of ASUS devices. And then they can run through their automated script and looking for, okay, I want routers. You see how quick and easy it was to boil this down to one device? This simple lookup in a DNS query can provide enough information to have you exposed to the point they can breach your ISP modem, your router. So what are our options here? For SUSE, we need you to document these settings. We also need you to transparently declare which default settings are used, especially in this case where one's Microsoft and the other one's Chinese government or an organization that's owned by the Chinese government. On the consumer side, don't turn on options, especially when it's got pre-settings or pre-config settings that you don't know what those settings are or where they point. If you want to use these, then change the settings. But that goes back to ASUS needs to document these settings. That's the first issue of this whole situation is there's no documentation. The second issue is ASUS, there is no transparency. And for the third, users need to be more aware. Now I want to finish this and say it's a great product. Never had an issue with it. Uptime's great. Performance is fabulous. It's just sometimes the devil is in the details. Please help me get this, get the word out about this issue. Put a like on this video. Share. Subscribe. Because every now and then I fall into stuff like this and it is quite interesting. My name is Sean Wilkerson. This has been Hacker Eyes. And we'll catch you in the next one.